Today we're going to have a brief tutorial um, of the JVC GYHM200U and we're going to go over the basic overview and basic functions of the camera. So first things we're going to do today is we're going to insert the battery into the rear of the camera and the battery release button is located to the right above the battery slot. So we're going to spin this around for you. This is your battery slot right here. As you'll notice there is a uh, little pins right here and you want to look for this is the female you want to look for the male which is right there so what you want to do is you want to put this in and slide over and you'll hear it lock and once it's locked it shouldn't move at all and then to release it as you'll see it's right here in the top right that's the release so again you look we have the female end we have the male end put it in click and you're good so next up, in order to use a camera with a tripod, you need to attach a tripod plate, which is right there. And you need to line up the screw and the pilot holes on the camera with the ones on the plate. So as you can see, the bottom of the camera, this is your screw, this is your pilot. And if you look at the bottom of this plate, you have your screw and you have your pilot. So what you want to do is you want to match it up. So you got your pilot, in your screw, pilot screw. So you put that in like that, screw it down, and usually you want to use, you could use a quarter or anything like that to tighten it down. Make sure it's relatively snug, not over tighten it, and then you're ready to go with the tripod. Now what you want to do is turn on the camera, which is right here, pretty handy dandy. It says on off, so it's off obviously, so you want to turn it on, and then what you want to do is you want to flip open the screen and give it a second and it will, it will turn on. So next what you want to do is you want to open up the dust cover which is right here. See it's like a little glass door. Open that up then you want to take an SD card and you want to slide it in. One of, the, one of the slots doesn't really matter. There's an A and a B. So it'll be red when you first put it in then it'll turn green letting you know that it's good to go. Close the, the door and you're ready to go. Next, you must format the SD card to make sure there's nothing on it from previous shoots. So what you want to do is you want to flip the camera around. You want to use this menu button right here. You want to hit menu. Then you want to go toggle down the system. Oh, system. Then you want to go to media. Then you want to go to format media. So when you format, it means you erase. So we put the SD card in slot A, hit this middle button, ask you want to format, yep, format. So it's complete. All right, cool. So now you can, use, you can hit the menu button and it'll take you out of it and bring you right back to the uh, regular screen on your camera. So in order to properly record audio to the camera, there are several steps you must follow. First, you want to plug your microphone into one of the XLR inputs. As you can see right here, we have two, two inputs, input one, input two. So we like to put it in input one for your on-camera mic. So it just snaps in like that. And now we want to flip the camera around, open up the dust panel. So now what you want to do is you want to flip around the camera and you want to open up your panel dust cover and you want to set both audio inputs to channel 1. So if you look right here, input, input, and it's channel 1. If, as you can see, in, input 1 is channel 1. So make sure they're both set to input 1 and then all your audio will come off of this mic. So as you have this opened up, you can look, and some microphones require phantom power, marked as mic plus 80, uh, 48V, which you'll see right there. So that's phantom power. In most cases, when using this camera, you will only be using input one. So set input one on the audio panel to the bottom setting, which is mic plus 48V. So as you'll see, input one, so it's phantom power. So the the camera powers the mic. 
If you're only using the internal camera microphone, set the channel 1 and channel 2 inputs located on the audio panel to INT. So INT, so that's your internal microphone on your camera. Next, you want to make sure that you can see your settings such as battery life and available recording time on your display as well as audio. If you cannot see these functions on the display, press display button located to the right of the SD card slot. So as you'll see, display is right here. So what, or right here, excuse me. So what you want to do is press that and you'll see that everything pops up. You have your audio and your battery life and recording life. So display shuts it off, turns it on. And you can press display three times. It can take it all away, give a little more information, or give it all the information if you hit it three times. So we want all the information so we can keep track of everything. So first, before toggling any more settings on or off, we must make sure that the Lodex is off. The way to tell if it's on is if there's a Lux 30 displayed on the bottom right-hand corner of the image on the screen, and it will appear washed out and grainy. If you look, the Lodex button is above the SD card panel. So if, if you look right here, it's, it's off right now. But if you look right here, this is the button. So I'm going to spin this around and show you what it looks like. So see how it's all grainy and, and gross looking? So that's what it's on, and that's when it's off. On, off. And as you can see right here, this is where you can tell if it's on or off right there. It also displays down there. So on, off. The camera can be set to automatic or manual control. To turn on complete automatic functions, simply press and hold the full auto button until an A in the white box appears on the bottom of the screen. If you look here, you'll see M. M means manual. So in order to change it full auto, the button is located under the audio panel and left of the hinge of the display screen. So if you look up, spin it like this, you'll see full auto right there. So I'm going to spin it back around, and you can take a look at what happens when it becomes full auto. So as you'll see, there's an M right there. So we want to switch full auto, and you want to hold it down. And you'll see A for full auto. So it's in full auto, hold it down, manual. And you can see the color changes, the temperature changes. So if you want to go full auto, you make sure there's an A there. Now, if you want to use manual settings, you first need to disengage the full automatic setting. Simply press and hold down the full auto button until a white M appears in the same place as the white A. So like, like we said before, you'll see full auto button. So you want to hold that down, and you'll see it go from A to M when I hold this down. There you go. We're in manual now. Next, if your shot is too bright or too dark, check your neutral density filter located to the left of the flip, flip out display. The ND filter, when engaged, dims your shot. If it's set to the off position, it will be brighter, and if it is set to 1 16th, it will be darker. So as you notice, it's right here. So currently it's off because we're inside. But if you're out and it's like wicked sunny out, flip that up to 1 16th and it will help with the sunlight. So you can take a look here. See, 1 1 16th, see it's darker because we're in low light. But since we're inside, we want it off. Also, you can change the shutter speed to allow for different amounts of light to enter the camera. The smaller the ratio, the brighter the shot. But the drawback is that the video will be choppy at low settings. To change shutter speed, press the shutter button located underneath the flip out display screen on the bottom right. See, so you'll see shutter right there. So now we know where the shutter button is. And if you look right here, there's two arrows up and down so you can increase or decrease your, your shutter speed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hold the shutter. And you'll notice in this bottom corner right here, it will become white. So now what I do is I can increase or decrease the shutter speed. And once you set it, hit the shutter button, it'll be set. So to set white balance, point the camera at a white surface next to the auto white balance slash nine button, which is located at the front of the iris scroll, which is under the full auto button. So if you look at the front of the camera, you'll see it right there. 
you can set the white balance on two separate channels, A and B, which is toggled under the display. There's also a preset white balance level, which is part of the same switch as A and B. So just a quick tutorial on how to white balance. What you want to do is, as you remember, your button is right there. So you want to point at a piece of, of paper. So I have some white paper right here. And you want to hit the button. You'll see it turn a little bluer when I, when I do it. See, it's white balancing based on the color temperature of the room. So that's auto. And this is when I white balance it. So next up is the gain switch, which is located right here. So the gain switch, which is located on the SD card slot right there, has three settings, low, medium, and high. In most situations, you'll want to have it on low. But if you need more light, then you can adjust the switch to medium or high. Keep in mind that the more gain you add, the greater the footage. It's almost best to adjust the iris before adjusting the gain. To change between autofocus and manual focus, press the AF-MF button located to the left of the full auto button, which, if you look right here, is based right there. So I flip the camera back around so you can see it a little more. So as you can see, right here we're in manual focus. So what you want to do to go auto, you'll see it go away. Now it's in auto, manual auto. So if you're in manual and you want to adjust, spin this around, and you adjust your focus with this ring. You can zoom three ways on this camera. The first is the most precise and is a smaller ring on the front of the camera. So right here. See? See how we're zooming in and out? There you go. The next best zoom control is above the hand strap on the right side of the camera. Hand strap right here, boom. So if you look right here, you have W and T. W is wide, T is to zoom in. There's also a, an additional control on the top of the camera. However, however, this control is not very precise or responsive. So as you'll see right here. Now that you've adjusted your camera settings for your shoot, you're ready to record. Simply press the record button located to the left of the hand strap. It's a black circular button with a red circle in the middle. When you want to stop recording, simply press the record button again. To make sure that your camera is recording, look at the display screen. If there's a red circle and a red REC at the top of the display, then you're recording. If there is a white STBY for standby, then you're not recording. So, not recording, recording. You'll see the red right there. Not see standby, so we're not recording. Recording, standby, not recording. The headphone jack is located underneath the battery port. It is hidden behind a dust cover, and the remote control is next to the headphone jack. These are all labeled, and there's also a DC power input on the right of the remote input. So as you'll see, you've got your power right there, got your dust cover, and then you can see your aux, remote, headphones, and your AV. It is important to take note of audio levels while recording. Make sure to listen, but also keep an eye on the audio levels that are displayed on the lower left of the screen. Make sure that there are audio levels visible and that they never hit the red. As you can see, they're moving as I talk. This was a brief tutorial in the basic functionality of the JVC GY HM200U. We hope you enjoyed it.